Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mildred, and I am your Gaming Monk for the evening. This is day 23 of the RPG A Day 2019 challenge. Today's word is surprise. No, we are not referencing that ad from Modern Warfare 2. Much as I would have liked to. No, instead I'd like to talk about the time that RPGs tried to do surprise mechanics. Specifically, the power card idea that was used in the relatively early days of D&D 4th Edition, which I will be running again in the coming weeks. The core idea was this was the set of power was the set of power pack cards for various classes, which on paper was an interesting idea, especially given how in one of the design documents they hint, they hinted at using cards as a um, as a means of easy, easily tracking powers, as well as tracking which powers you've expended. Which, okay, I can, go, I can certainly go with that. The problem lies in when they tried it with an other game, when they brought back Gamma World. Now don't get me wrong, the Gamma World that they brought back, I absolutely loved it. It was a great game, but the card idea that they used for that one where they decided to use random picks and have a setup similar to the booster packs that you might find in Magic Ga the Gathering, was dumb, 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 dumb. I understand why they did it. I get the idea, especially with all the mutation shit that can go on in Gamma World. But having, having characters' abilities be reduced to a uh, RNG affair was not something that I was entirely cool with, and it's the reason why nobody tried it after a few months. And it didn't take long for even Wizards of the Coast to sweep the whole thing under the rug. But let's talk about this whole idea of, of card-based abilities. I'm perfectly fine with using cards in some form with RPG mechanics. Hopefully, in the next few months, I'll get to talk about the Saga system from... Dragonlance 5th Age, as well as the Marvel Adventure game. Because that approach was certainly unique. There's also stuff like Untold, which uses it in packs. And I don't have a problem with that either. The issue is always in execution. And I think that the, I think that the randomization can work, but it needs to be done in a very structured manner. I think the best framework for it would be if you used something akin to the living card game format that Fantasy Flight Games has with their various card games. Where you're not buying booster packs, you're buying these 40-card expansions. And sometimes bigger expansions, but let's not get into the nitty-gritty of the details. The point is, with these expansions... You can have a degree of you can have a degree of randomness with the cards, while also making it somewhat controlled. I.e., i.e., it's not random to the point where somebody who is skilled can get beaten out by somebody who just happened to have a luck of the draw. A long time ago, I remember trying to readapt my old Legend Wars card game idea into a into a mix of roguelike and card and card game RPG but I was never able to quite finish it and what didn't exactly help matters is the fact that I lost a lot of my data when my old computer went belly up it might be something I'd be willing to return to in the future we'll see and hell if I end up doing it I could probably use the original Guild Wars as a bit of inspiration but that's a story for another time